Hello everyone, this is your YouTube user i80386SX and I've come to you today with a, another vintage computer. This is more of an exploration video, so not actually tearing anything apart that I know of. You now, these are unscripted videos, so anything could happen, but I wanted to show this uh, Compact ProLiant. Yes, you heard that correctly for the ones that have been in IT for a while. This is really a Compact ProLiant. You will, most of you will probably know, if you know the ProLiant line, you'll know, as, know them as the HP ProLiant or HPE ProLiant, but HP bought them, bought out Compaq in the early 2000s, and they took the name. But if you want to go on a history lesson, we can do that later. But anywho, here is a server that I originally bought it during the beginning of the pandemic to see if it could do the folding at home exercise, just as a joke. I pretty much got it for free. That, needless to say, it didn't work. The program loaded, but it didn't actually fold anything. But, anywho, we'll go around the back here. Pardon the mess if you should see any of it. Nothing exciting port wise whatsoever. Not much light here, I know, but. You can tell it's got a couple USB ports, serial port, VGA, two power supplies, although one is not plugged in. It's going to squawk about that later. And what I'm going to do, we're going to install, found this demo of Novell Netware 5 just because Windows is too boring and Microsoft is terrible. So I saved this thing from the trash at an old employer years ago and let's see what we can do with it. Now, my monitor is actually over yonder on the actual quote-unquote server rack, so I'll be going back and forth quite a bit with that. Let's turn this thing on and see what we got. It says three gigs of memory. And yes, the power supply is good, it's just not plugged in. And I actually did upgrade this to have dual 1.4 gigahertz Pentium 3 processors. I believe the RAM is pretty much maxed out. I think it, I think the ProLiant DL380 Gen 2 can go up to four gigs of memory. I'm not sure, nor do we need to worry about it in this video. And I have two 72 gig drives and a RAID 1 array. And everything looks good. Other than it says it's configured for Windows 2000, Windows.net, which I'm not really concerned about. Special. Ah. Oh shit. Ah. And read a license agreements on your own time. And let's see what it does if we can create a new partition. Continue. And since this is my re folding at home data that failed miserably, I am going to wipe all the partitions. And we get to go do this again. And the fan speed on these early ProLiant, prior to, I want to say, the Gen 5 series, they kind of follow a Henry Ford rule. You can have any fan speed as you want as long as it's super noisy. I 
just to show you, I'm using a one of these portable Walmart special Logitech keyboards. They actually work just fine, believe it or not. We'll see how long that happens, but you know what? Since I'm, we're going to pretend to do things correctly here. I'm going to see if I can change that operating system. I don't know that if I'm going to be able to in a hurry here, but you can kind of see what the uh, um, what the uh, BIOS on a ProLiant looks like. It's used this style for several years. Oh, OS selection. And we have NetWare 5X slash 6. That's what we're going to be working with today. And F10. That part uh, stayed the same across the home computers, business class computers, and servers. And I hope that this particular video, unlike the last one I uploaded, doesn't turn to a horrible comedy of errors, but anything is possible. And I do have a feeling that it's going to ask for a licensed disc at some point. And that's going to require the three and a half floppy. So I may have to, with the magic of video editing, go extract that. And but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And away we go. Some of the old style or old school Novell enthusiasts will actually create the partition prior to installing Novell Netware. They'll actually take a MS DOS 6.22 or DOS version of your choice and make that partition. I'm not picky enough to care in this video, so we're going to go with what was on the disk, which I believe is Novell's own version of DOS. It's another fun fact that. Novell Netware booted off of a, I want to think it was like a 200 meg volume or something like that. It probably said a second ago and I don't remember, but it, the system needs a FAT16 volume with a valid version of DOS of some kind in order to work. And I'm not sure why... This is taking a while, but, oh, there we go. Novell's idea of examining your processor speed. If you put Novell Netware on a 486-based computer, that processor speed number is, I believe, was a four-digit number, not a six-digit number. But it is possible to run Novell Netware 5.1 on a 486. I don't recommend it, say, but if you want to do that, more power to you. While we're waiting on that, I'll see if I can get a little bit better lightness for it. Oh, yeah. Now we can see, yeah, it's definitely a compact pro Alliance, so there are no Photoshop tricks. Here's the server itself again. I know it's plugged into an APC on the wrong side. the onboard NIC. 
and I believe this machine has one PCI slot and two PCI X slots. That's a little bit longer PCI slot, but it's not new enough for PCI E. But anywho, here is our installation. We will continue. I'm in the US of A. And I don't know if this is gonna hurt us in the future, so I'm gonna select PS2. I am installing on with a USB keyboard mouse combination, so we'll have to wait and see. And these are 15K SCSI drives that we're using, so. I think our CD-ROM is absolutely the bottleneck, which it probably is with an IDE drive regardless, so. But once we get past the parts that require the CD-ROM, this should go pretty fast. And I, I know you can't see it, but the CD-ROM drive is definitely going. And, oh, there we go. I don't know if you saw that, but it looks like it's trying to copy some storage drivers. Compact Array Ham, Compact SCSI Ham. Yes, actually, the file extension is Ham. I don't know if I can get this to just here. I don't know, try. There you go. That's too shabby. Yeah, I'm trying to do this free-handed, so pardon my clumsy shaking. I actually never took out this uh, demo disc ever. I just basically brought it home and I left it in the package all these years. So I don't know if we're going to run into problems with this disc down the road or not. But you and I are going to find out together the joys of an unscripted channel. And we'll likely also at some point have to come up with a Windows XP or earlier computer for clients for this. And again, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And much like uh, Windows Server, Windows NT Server in 2000, there were traditional service packs you had to apply. I believe Nobel Netware 5.1 had eight service packs, but good news is you didn't have to apply, go one, then two, you could just go straight to eight. Not always the case in the world of Windows. hope this is at the end soon. I think, uh, okay, this part might be getting close to done, thankfully. So, 
Now it's going to match up some drivers here. And this, honestly, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing. We may have to go get some drivers for the SCSI card, but we'll just see. Because usually there's something else, a second entry that goes here. And we'll find out. Continue. This is not looking good, but we'll see. It also, the good news is it did detect the, both the network cards, or, so that, and I believe those are the onboard ones, so that part is good. And yes, so we are going to have to go find a driver for this, for the Novell Netware, Novell, Novell Netware version driver that goes to this card. I believe it's a Smart Array 5i, if I'm remembered my history from 15 minutes ago, so. With the magic of video editing, I'm going to be doing some research and hopefully we'll have a driver for you soon. And I am back and fortunately, if the quick research is done, I was able to find a driver with little trouble on the HPE website. I'm impressed that that's still, they still had the drivers for it. I put them on a three and a half inch floppy and we shall see what we can do here. to continue. Ah! With modify. Uh, let's see. I have a key I may not have here. Uh, insert. Hmm! Try that again. Okay, driver install for storage controller take two. Found something that probably is it. The uh, This is supposedly an Adaptec card, but we shall see. That's good. I don't like this at all. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, I guess we'll go offline again and we'll go for take three later on. Hello again. This is actually now take three of our driver. Novell network installation. So what happened was that the original drivers I got from HPE were the correct drivers, but Novell doesn't recognize the LF or the NLM extension when you're in this section. You had to have the ham driver. All you had to do with those uh, the NLM file is that if you open up your zip program of choice of WinZip WinRAR and you drag the contents of that to a floppy and you will get your ham file and as a result we have the correct driver so let's see what we get if we go continue between this time I did try to get a little bit newer version of the Novell Network Disk uh, 5.1 it did not make a difference but anywho we are now we have a SCSI HD, so this is looking like we are in a little bit better place now. That beat's supposed to mean, if anything, at this point. Here's the moment of truth, I believe. Now, I'm going to say that since we got this far, I think we should be able to move on. Yep, here we go. 
I am going to use the entire volume. I'm just going to leave the defaults. I know there's a lot better ways to sort this out in Novell Netware, but my netware is a little too rusty to figure that out right now, so I'm just going to go with the defaults. Mounting the CD-ROM, that's a good trick. I technically already is mounted, you think, but... The CD-ROM is reading the disc the entire time here, so I think it's trying to do something... There we go, Howard. I think this is phase two of four, I believe. It's been probably a better part of 15 years since I've actively messed with Nobel Netware. How long this is going to take. I thought this was a couple minute process, but we'll see. And yes, there is a Novell Netware is based off of Java, and some of the old no Novell Netware folks believe that was probably contributing to the demise of Novell Netware, and that I think Microsoft Server being a thing kind of did more damage than anything. This is also the same operating system, at least in the version 3 and 4 variants, where you'll see extremely long uptimes now. In 2021, not the best of ideas, but back in the day when these servers weren't on the internet or nobody cared about them, the uptime was especially impressive. And I believe there's a Novell Network server that's been up for 17 years, or was up for 17 years before it was decommissioned. You don't see that in a Microsoft server environment. At this point, the, oh, the CD started going again. Never mind.
Must be a big fail. Know what they say, progress bars are always a lie. And I believe the system requirements for Novell Network 5.1, I believe it's actually a Pentium 2. Oh, box is on the other side of the room. I have a copy of Small Business somewhere. I think it's set on there. That wasn't recommended, so. Not sure why this is hanging up like this, though. I really don't remember this taking this long, but who knows, we'll keep it going, keep the camera going here for a couple minutes, and if I'm still stuck, then I will use the magic of video editing and go from there. The server itself, unfortunately, doesn't have hard drive LED indicators. Or mine are not working for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on here, so I think for now I am going to cut this part out. If this moves forward, great. If not, I'll keep troubleshooting. Okay, we are back in business, and the culprit was my burned CD. I think I had a stack of older CDs. I think they were from the XP era, and this CD burner just didn't want anything to do with it, so... 
had to go down and run down to the local Walmart and go buy CDRs, but oh well, well, what are you going to do? Once I popped that in, this took off a lot faster, but let's continue on with our setup and enough about my adventures with servers. And I have no idea which Nick is actually enabled. Just give it an IP address on my network here. Something that is correct. If this is not right, then I could easily, obviously, switch this around. And Novell also had IPX, which is their own version of TCP IP, I want to believe. I'm, I've never personally used it, but Novell also had a really good way to uh, restrict internet access through their network by username if they wanted to, and I... My theory is that they probably use something, a combination of IPX and IP to do that. Give me a second while I put this in. possible that I may need to make some changes to my DNS server in order for this change to take effect, but we'll see what it does. Also not entirely sure if this, uh, it ha if I have this even in the right nick yet, but that's another mystery you get to figure out a little down a little bit down the road here. And another side note here that I don't doubt anybody cares, but the factory Novell demo disc didn't want to play nice with my compact driver, but the copy that I had from I don't know where I had it from that did so I just continued on with the copy but I believe you can use the license from the demo disc or really use any valid license for that matter let me see I don't know if my changes would be immediate at this point. But this is taking a real, real long time. It ain't one thing, it's another with this one.
give me my DNS server all up over here. And I cannot ping this IP address yet. Let me. Let us go to the server. Try the other neck. I don't think these serve. Oh, there we go. Yep, so now we can ping. But it didn't let us go through, so. We're gonna do a new NDS tree. NDS is basically Active Directory in the Novell world. They work very differently from each other, but the concept is the same. And then we got the tree. And I'm not creating the whole naming scheme here, so we're just going to do that. And we're, our passwords are going to be so goddamn creative that they'll knock your socks off. We gotta remember those settings. Okay, so I'm gonna install this without licenses. I'm gonna see if it allows me to do such a thing. Ah, crap, no, it can't. So, because I think this is gonna force us, force our hands here, but let's see if we can get on the disc here. And... I don't feel good about our chances here, but. Yeah, there's no way, so I'm gonna have to get these license files and the, along with uh, the region cryptography module. So, video editing is a great thing, so I'm gonna go put those on a floppy and we will continue on from there. All right, welcome, welcome back for the umpteen time. So, I'm gonna try and install this with a license and we'll Oh, shoot. You know what? It'll help us when we try to browse, right? Let's see what this says. Yeah. Hope we don't have uh, 50. Okay. So we'll go next. All right, we're gonna be right back here. Okay, folks, we're back. So I went back one step because I actually did have to grab that license file. I grabbed a uh, the demo one off of the original factory CD, so I'm hoping that that'll work. I believe it does. It'll be an NLF file like you see here. This server license will contain one server license and three connections. There are some licenses that require a product key there's some that don't. Novell 6, I believe, and later was a little bit more 
lenient towards license use. If you were to spin up a second Novell server, you need another license for that and whatnot. Uh, if you try to, uh, on these earlier versions, if you try to install more than one server in the same tree, the second server wouldn't work. Hey, who? Oh. Okay, this is getting more interesting by the second. Alright, I will see if I can find another license. And we are back, and I actually went back one screen to licenses, uh, just because since I had to copy that file off of the disc or the CD, I might as well grab the demo license while I was there, so we'll do that. I put it on the... Uh, for some reason, I can't access the CD-ROM drive, so I just put those two the NLF file, and I think it's an NLK file that we're going to be concerning ourselves with shortly here. There we go. Network 5.1 demo, server plus three connections, expires in 90 days. Some licenses require an additional product key to use. I don't think this is one of them. I actually did find out my demo disc actually is a network 5.0. It's not even 5.1. So I did try to use the license from the demo disc that I showed you earlier, and it just said no chance. All right, cool. So I'm just going to go default here. Let's go through all that. Eh, we have three gigs of RAM, why not? I'm probably not going to go through half of this anyway, so I'm just going to click through next. And we're no finish. Things work a lot better when you have the right files. But I'm going to, this is another copy operation. Not much is going to change between here and the end of this, so. With video editing, I am going to cut this part out and I'll return back as soon as we get uh, after this copy. All right, so this uh, is what we got as soon as we uh, got to 100%. There's one screen that I missed, unfortunately, but not the end of the world for the purposes of this video. I'm not sure what settings it's trying to process at this point, but... Oh, there we go. Remove any diskettes, CDs, and restart. 10-4, buddy. Up server, no time like the present, right? There we go. Not sure if we're detecting both processors or not, but that's okay because I'm for the purpose of this video, I don't really care. And this is the point where I wish I set up some kind of real tripod, but well. It is what it is.
And I hope we can get past this soon. There we go. I don't know when that changed over to Windows 2000, but I don't think that's really going to hurt our purposes here. As you can tell, it did go into DOS initially. One thing I never understood about with Windows 95 or 98 or Millennium Edition, it was basically a shell of DOS. And it was not very good, but Novell was the exact opposite, so... I don't know if it's quite the same setup or not, but just something to think about. And I believe we're, we should be almost done here. And oh, it does the processor speed every time. That's something I forgot. And you may get a few beeps as drivers initialize. There's a Novell background that usually comes up to tell you that you're pretty much booted. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got it again. Oh, this is it. Okay. So we got a cursor. This is really not, you can't do much of anything with this. It's not meant to be like a Windows server where you can use it if you have to. It's really basic, but... And then you could, I think it's Alt Escape, maybe? Oh, hold on. You're supposed to be able to get a text or like a command prop type. And I am not getting that. Weird. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so Control Escape will take you through various services. Then you got a monitoring service, which is probably not a. No, this is a web manager. Never scratch that. Web server. Yeah, lots of stuff that are. I did the default install. I usually try to go a little bit more bare bones in this, but. Hope I ain't freeze it up, but. Anywho, that's the control escape. Oh, there we go. Dragon today. I don't know. Anywho, that takes you through 
a Novell installation, although this one's a little bit laggy. So for now, I'm going to end this portion of it. And it would, no, it technically has nothing to do with the server and that's or jet engine that's making all the noise, but we'll get the Novell client installed on something and we'll log on to a Novell server. And there might be a little surprise in, at the end of this, depending on if my demo disc will allow me to do it. All right, folks, we are back. And this is the second half of this video. And yes, I did the VMware workstation route on this one. Kind of a cheap way to go, but couldn't find any of my uh, PCM CIA or card bus NIC cards for any of my Windows 98 laptops, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, so, and yeah, we're the Windows 95, 98. This part should be pretty boring. Just go typical. But of course, I expect nothing less from Windows. Do you? Let's see if I had enough sense to copy the. Nope, I did not copy the Windows 98 directory, but unlike my other video from the other day with the compact docking station, we should be able to. Wrap a Windows 98 ISO pretty easily here. Right. Have lots of ISOs here. Just gotta find the right one here. Let's do this real quick. Hope I got that right. Apologize for this inconvenience, but fortunately this is looking like this is going to be a fairly fast copy at least. Uh, right, let me get the Novell Network disk back in here. Two. Ah, what a pain in the rear, won't let you. I'm gonna hold the camera like a drunk guy, apparently. Okay. Hope I just didn't get a. I see, I think I did wrong there. Oh, besides, okay, that looks a little bit better. And, okay, what does it say? You are, if you're configuring it before you... So, let's do that. Oh, I, okay, let's not do that. I don't remember what those are off the top of my head, even I told, even despite the fact that I told you, you should probably remember that, but when you restart this computer, you'll get the opportunity to search for that, search for all that information. So, I'm not too worried. Right up. 
bit involved with this one. Got some new stuff in there. I got the path for the Novell clients is now part of the config sys file. Yes, disregard my ridiculous username. So, you hit the advanced, and you'll get to go to opportunity to go to tree. Perfect. Hope I remembered my password. There we go. And now, well, whatever. Eh, okay, cool. It's 2004. Oddly enough, about the, right around the time I graduated high school. That is awesome. But I have a feeling that my uh, CMOS battery probably croaked in my server, and that's probably worth getting the time from. Actually, in fact, we can go find that out in a little bit here. And survey says, and we got our Novell Netware directory. Thinks it's OS2. And I kind of want to show you what the, uh, I guess it's both the same directory. One or two ways that you can, uh, can put in users and basically like your active directory users and computers in the, on the Windows side. And I gotta remember how to, okay, Console One, I think was the program in question. Sure. I've never used this with Windows 98 before, so a little bit more uh, investigative work we got to do with this, but unscript the channel, that's the beauty of it. All right, there we go. And the good news is you only have to do that part once where of entering the tree and all that stuff. And okay, so yeah, our time is back to May 2004 again. So I figured that our clock battery probably died in our server. Uh, Console one. That's what we're gonna look at. You can technically do this on the server, although I don't find it to be very fun to do. And there you are. We got our organization. We have our server. Hi, ah, we're missing something here. It used to be looking for my user here. Oh, security. If this is an NDS, let's try that, no. Or do I gotta log in? Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is... I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this.
I wonder Oh, there we go. A little bit cumbersome in 5.1. It's a lot more advanced in 6. We'll just go to the user properties real quick. If you'll allow me. All right, there we go. So you can put the, the information in. Your name, telephone number, department, all that fun stuff. And... Well, according to this, you don't even have to have a password the way we got this going. Now you can check all that. I'm sure there's a global policy that you can use to force all that. Group memberships. And you can even put in the login scripts a little bit nicer than what I... Because you can tie each user to a login script if you wanted to. It's very... Novell is very granular in that, right? And I won't go into that today. Lots of stuff that I don't even remember anymore. So, we will cancel that. The other tool of choice that... I got to fight now, I think it's... Our... It says NetAdmin32, which... <laughs> That's special. I guess we're not going to show that one today. Alright, let's reset this guest. I don't know what happened there, but that's never seen that happen before running that NW admin. We don't try to understand what Windows 98 does, we just try to tolerate it. Used to do IT for a church that had Novell Network 6, and that's what that NW admin was my tool of choice. It did not ever crash like that. We got a blinking cursor in the corner. There we go. So there's one more thing on this disc called Zenworks Starter. I'm gonna try and see if I can get it going. I can't make any promises, but I'm sure going to try anyway. Oh, there we go. Zenworks kind of acted like a group policy in the early days. That's kind of the best way I can explain it. Your public school systems love Novell Netware and Zenworks for that reason. And you can tell this is installing directly on the server right now using that file path. And fortunately, our DNS did just enough. Didn't have to make any DNS changes to get that far, so that was nice. But then again, I am on a Nobel Network server, so using the Nobel client, so that probably does play a role into it. Surprise, this is taking a while, but. And this is the Zenworks starter pack that came with the demo disc, so I'm actually surprised that this is allowing me to go this far.
Honestly, I have no idea how long this is going to take. Zen works to create. Well, I'm going to try root. All right, looks good. No restarts required. That's always good. Great. So, our million dollar question. I honestly have no idea how to. I have a feeling that either console one or net admin, NW admin 32 was supposed to be our tools of choice here. We'll, we'll see. Okay, no idea. All right, I'm gonna have to research this one. So with the magic of video editing, as soon as I figure out the Zenworks portion of this or refresh myself rather, uh, we will continue on. All right. And I would warm at least to where we do these and, uh, Zenworks changes and was definitely in the network administrator. So if you want to create yourself an object, we'll go select the MD org. We want to create an object. We want to go down to policy package. And I'm just going to do something relatively harmless here. We're going to force a background. That's all we're going to do. And we'll define additional properties. And... Did I click the wrong thing? I clicked the wrong thing, I think. Well, unscripted. I'm too lazy to cut that part out. I think that was it. Maybe it did. I'm not sure. Oh, yes, it did click something wrong. So you have to, at this screen, you'll have to uh, either click on Windows 3.1, 95, or NT. I'm just going to call it 19X. We'll find properties again. We'll slowly. There we go. So. You can make a printer, which group policy can do. You got system policies. You got the, I forget what RES stands for. You can restrict the login outright, and you can configure all sorts of options in the Novell client. First thing is first, we're gonna adjust our schedule so this thing runs all of the time. Policy. Details. Uh, okay. Oh, I still... Oh, okay. Where are the links? So here we can do a few things. Network access control. 
And I have a feeling that my policy in question here is probably in the other as a user package, but we'll see. We'll, we'll keep this one on. Alright, so we'll create that again. We'll go back to policy package. And we'll do Windows 95 user package this time. Okay, that looks more like what we want. There we go. So we need a wallpaper. And we'll do the quiz. I thought there was a clouds one here. Right? Maybe we don't have that anymore. Setup it is. And we'll lose large icons. That's cool, right? And we'll associate with our admin user. There's groups you can add users in. And it'll do everything for you in a group, obviously, it's... Microsoft's a little bit more idiot-proof in that sense, and of course things have come a long way since 1999. So let's log off. Let's see if our policy will... We'll kick in right away here. Okay, that's weird. There's an application launcher with this too, so here if you, uh, you can put in applications that you want your users to access and Zenworks can take all these icons and disable them. They can basically render your start menu useless. There's a lot of things that Zenworks can do. For whatever reason, my policy never took place. Maybe I gotta put, I don't know, it's kind of weird. What event, user login, so that should be fine. I wonder if we gotta reboot. Come on, Windows. There we go. Well, ain't that something? It doesn't want to take. Yeah, I wonder if. It Possibly because it's the admin user, it may be ignoring some of those settings, and it has a tendency to do that. That's what's supposed to come up, but unfortunately it doesn't. So 
So, plan B, or BB, uh, I'm not sure how many plans we're going after at this point, but. This old thing here. Double check that my settings actually did save. Okay, yep, we got it. Interesting. That's absolutely looks right, so. Alright, let's create another user. There may be some possibility that the admin user just doesn't take that policy for whatever reason. This part looks pretty straightforward in theory, but it's not exactly. There we go. I don't think I gave it a password, but that's okay. We don't need a password. I don't know if I made it me or test. All right, let's try that again. I am not sure why this is not working, but I thought I did see an error though that may or may not Access has been denied. I think that's special. Ah, this is the slowest. of this policy way because we don't need that. The application part of it is through Zenworks as well, so technically it's working. Just for whatever reason, we're just having all sorts of trouble with this right now. To really point the camera. Not sure what's going on here. See what some of this does. Oh, what's this do? There we go. I did not know that was actually in two different spots, but, well, you learn something new every day, so. Ah. At work. You know what, let's do that too. Da, 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 da. Let's see if any of this works. All right. 
this is my last attempt to do this regardless, because we know with the Nobel delivered applications, we at least got something going. That part is not part of the netware installation. And survey says, ah, dang. That's what survey says. Still lets me into everything. Last ditch effort to try the test user. And no joy. But anywho, you got to see how it's configured. I know I'm missing something in and how this is supposed to attach. I just haven't figured it out yet. But anywho, if uh, you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or constructive criticism, feel free to let me know in the comments section. If you can give me a hint in terms of what I'm missing for how to make that application or that desktop change back to what it's supposed to, please tell me, because I'm genuinely curious now. And I don't remember having this much trouble with it, so. Thank you again for watching yet another long-winded video. It turned into, turned into quite a thing here. So thank you again.